South Africa remains the only country in history to have developed nuclear weapons and then voluntarily given them up. Three other countries, Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine, surrendered nuclear weapons back to Russia that they had inherited when the Soviet Union collapsed. This means that these three countries disposed of the weaponry only at the behest of Russia in exchange for assurances that Russia would never challenge their borders. South Africa's case was widely different. They had a nuclear weapons program, funded it, tested the arsenal, maintained and controlled the weapons for over a decade and then willfully dismantled the program. In this sense, it is the closest storyline to what U.S. officials have in mind when they demand the denuclearization of North Korea. So why did the South African government in the mid-1970s decide to embark on a nuclear weapons program? The main motivation was the expansionist policies of the USSR in the southern region of Africa. The USSR were putting in place efforts to support African liberation movements they supplied weapons and training, and it was part of their vision to win the Cold War in most of the countries in Southern Africa. South African forces feared the threat of a domino effect in favor of communism in the region. They financed the deployment of thousands of Cuban troops, especially to Angola. The other reason why South Africa developed the bombs was so that it could potentially strike targets in other countries in sub-Saharan Africa as part of South Africa's long-running campaign against regional rebel groups or even hostile revolutionary governments. During much of the Cold War, South Africa was an international pariah state due to its oppressive apartheid policy and while the country's leaders of the time, including former South African President F. W. de Klerk, maintained that the nuclear arsenal was never intended to be used, it was definitely deadly enough to be a deterrent. South Africa was becoming more and more isolated in the eyes of the rest of the world and there was mounting pressure for the white majority government to end apartheid. The country feared that there wouldn't be any assistance from the international community in the case of Russian aggression or invasion, which informed the thinking. If they had nuclear weapons during a confrontation with USSR, they would disclose that they weren't a pushover since they could cause Hiroshima-style damage with their nuclear bombs. It would change the political scenario forcing the United States and other countries to step in, either to assist South Africa or to de-escalate the tensions. With plenty of uranium available, South Africa had already become interested in nuclear energy as a source of electrical power by the early 1970s. It sought to enrich uranium for its own use and for export, and at the same time, the government began to examine the military potential of these weapons. In the same period, the country was becoming increasingly entrenched in the border war, also known as the Namibian War of Independence in what was then known as Southwest Africa and later became Namibia. Namibia remained under South African control until 1990, when it was granted independence. The South African border war resulted in some of the largest battles on the African continent since World War II and was closely intertwined with the Angolan Civil War and insurgent guerrilla war in Zambia. The South African Defense Force also became involved in fighting in Angola to the north where it would meet well-equipped Cuban and other Soviet-backed forces. By 1974, the South African regime had decided to develop a nuclear weapon that could be used, if required, in these escalating conflicts. Not surprisingly, the efforts to build these weapons of mass destruction were conducted in extreme secrecy. What is known is that by 1977, a single gun-type nuclear device, a fission-based weapon like the U.S. Little Boy bomb dropped in Hiroshima, was ready to be tested. At this point, 
secrecy around the program increased further and it was switched from scientific to military control. Ultimately, South Africa succeeded in producing six complete nuclear devices that could be deployed plus a test device. The ultimate demise of South Africa's nuclear weapons program started with the presidency of F. W. D. Clark who came to power in 1989 and decided to do away with it. There was apparently no significant opposition from the military whose experience in years of cross-border conflicts had not revealed any requirement for a weapon of this type. In the end, the actual possibility of deployment of a nuclear weapon in the conflict in Angola was always small and its use would be meaningless as it would escalate the conflict while further ostracizing the South African regime. By 1990, the end of explicitly racist apartheid policy now seemed to be in sight and possession of weapons of mass destruction would do nothing to enhance South Africa's international position. While a veil of secrecy remained over the nuclear program, de Clark oversaw the removal of enriched uranium from the weapons that had been completed. According to him, the nature of threats that faced the country were no longer present. With the coming down of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the USSR, the threat of Soviet communist expansionism fell away. A peace accord was signed in Angola, the Cuban troops were withdrawn and the South African state of Namibia became independent. In 1991, South Africa finally signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty, becoming the first country to have developed nuclear weapons, disarmed them and went on to sign the treaty. De Clark went public with the news of the existence and the dismantling of the nuclear weapons program. Since the 90s, there's always been a cloud of suspicion that the timing of disarmament indicated a desire to prevent a nuclear arsenal from falling into the hands of a native African and colored government with the collapse of the apartheid system controlled by European settlers. The transition government was eventually led by Nelson Mandela from 1994 as the nation's first black president. In 1993, the New York Times wrote, many suspect the government was also motivated by a desire to prevent its nuclear weapons from some day falling into the hands of a black government, end quote. Imagine how the world would change if all the nuclear states follow South Africa's example and dismantle their nuclear weapons. Would the world be safer? I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Eight sovereign states are known to have tested nuclear weapons. Five of these are considered to be nuclear weapon states, according to the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons Treaty. In order of acquisition, these are the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France and China. Since the treaty entered into force in 1970, three states that were not parties to the treaty have conducted overt nuclear tests namely India, Pakistan and North Korea. Israel is also generally understood to have nuclear weapons but does not acknowledge it, maintaining a policy of deliberate ambiguity. Of course, South Africa armed and disarmed in secret. The case offers an insight into why its leaders pursue nuclear weapons and what motivated them to give them up less than 20 years later. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have a better understanding of the continent, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.